for the cleft lip surgery, a uh, very common approach that we take is the Millard rotational flap. So Millard rotational flap, uh, students, it has three components, A, B, and C. So if you look at the picture here, you will see the A incision. You're raising the flap. You can see this is the A. Then you have the C. A is the rotational flap we have. C is columellar flap. A and C are on the lateral side of the cleft. Now once A and C flaps are being raised, you are able to cut the full thickness lip in the cleft area. You can see here is a cleft here. And this is the area that is filled up with the B. So B is on the medial side of the cleft and A and C are on the lateral side of the cleft. So after full thickness of lip is cut along the marking which is filled by the B, planned on the lateral side, by using this approach, you are having minimal tissue discard and results can be modified as per during the surgery. So you can see after that you are suturing it up and making a normal lip for the child. Miller drop here. Now when we talk about, now let us talk about the surgical palate closure. The surgical palate closure should be attempted between 12 to 14 months of age, no earlier than that, so that the child can develop the normal speech, hearing and swallowing. So you can see the picture here. It is a cleft lip that is extending into the cleft palate actually. The tension of the lip closure centralizes the premaxilla and the other side of the lip is closed at 4 months of age. So using the vomerine flaps from right and left side are used to close the anterior flap which is done at 8 to 12 months using von Langenbach technique. Then the lip revision and columella lengthening are done at age of 3. There is something called as Oslo protocol. The Oslo protocol actually started in Norway and their protocol does not follow the preoperative orthopedic actually. First of all, in this protocol, you are carrying out the lip repair using the Millard procedure as we discussed at age of 3 months. Now, if you have an associated cleft of the alveolus and palate along with the lip, a cranial based single layer vomer flap is sutured under the alveolus palate periosteum at the time of lip closure. That's how you are managing the cleft palate in the child. Oslo protocol has been observed to generate good treatment. Now for the closure of the secondary palate, remaining hard and soft palate closure is done at the age of 18 months by using the von Langenbach pattern palatoplasty. And the alveolar bone grafting, it can be done at 8 to 10 years of age. The stage 2 treatment is carried out during the primary dentition period that is from your 6 months to 6 years of age where you are adjusting the obturator for the child to accommodate any erupting deciduous dentition, to maintain a check on eruption pattern and restoration of decayed teeth with the oral hygiene instruction. Orthodontic treatment is normally not recommended for the primary dentition as it may change the prime permanent dentition follicle. However, if the patient has moderately underdeveloped maxilla, reverse headgear treatment should be advocated starting from age 4 to 7 itself. Now, twice brushing, important. Low fluoride children toothpaste containing no more than 600 ppm is recommended for children under 6 years and twice professional application of topical fluoride. Now when we talk about stage 3 treatment that is carried during the missed dentition period that is from 6 to 12 years of age, so in early years the main emphasis is towards the eruption of teeth normally in the mixed dentition stage and prevention of the dental disease. It is this phase when you are doing the secondary alveolus bone grafting procedure that are called as SABG procedure. A child with cleft palate may need surgery after initial cleft palate repair to replace the missing bone in the front of mouth and roof to the mouth. You are using the successful grafting procedure that give a osseous environment to permit spontaneous eruption of canine in the grafted area and so should be undertaken after eruption of permanent incisors but before the eruption of permanent canines. That's a very important point. You doing a bone grafting will provide a bony bridge to the cleft in the alveolar area. The benefit of SABG is to provide bony support for the alveolar blaze to minimize nasal deformity and also eliminating any oro nasal and nasolabial fistula, hence avoiding any nasal reflux of the fluid and the air. Also doing SABG helps in stabilization of your maxillary segment to facilitate future secondary corrective osteotomy if they are required. Also doing SABG helps in facilitate your teeth eruption into the cleft side and achieve orthodontic movement adjacent to the cleft side. The timing of SABG is done at the age when growth inhibition effect of the surgery can be minimized. 
and can help NASDAQ and I and the lateral incisor to erupt through the cancellous bone. It is done in the mixed dentition period after eruption of permanent incisor but before eruption of permanent canine. You have to firstly see if there is a requirement of SABG procedure by doing thorough clinical and radiological assessment. All retained deciduous teeth, supernumerary teeth and rudimentary teeth should be extracted before you do the bone grafting procedure. Before you do bone grafting, a child may require some pre-surgical orthodontics like doing the maxi arch expansion, repetitive weekly protocol of alternative rapid maxi so before you do the SABG procedure, the child uh, may require some pre-surgical orthodontics like using the Maxi Arch Expansion by Quad Helix, appliance of choice. You can see some of the pictures here. Now the surgical technique for doing the SABG, two surgeons are working together. One is working on the donor side, one on the host side. And you're doing the incision around the margin of the cleft in the alveolus. And you're raising a full thickness flap to allow the space for the bone graft. Gingival mucoperiosteal are the most recommended one. The graft you are taking is from iliac bone, packed in cleft alveolus. The flap is then sutured to ensure complete seal. Now, post bone, now what are different orthodontic procedures that can be carried out during mixed dentition phase in a cleft patient? Uh, correction of anterior crossbite using removal of fixed appliance like using Z springs. Uh, buccal segment crossbite, you can treat them by using the quad helix appliance or the expansion screws, which are pre bone graft orthodontics. You can see the picture. This is a picture of your quad helix picture. Now, then we have the stage four treatment during the permanent dentition. So that is twelve years and after. So presence of permanent dentition usually signs for the definitive auto treatment. So all local irregularities like crowding, spacing, cross bite, over jet, over bite problems are all corrected. And also the patient with the hypoplastic maxilla may be given face mask to advance any. Maxilla, dietary counseling, oral hygiene instructions, and advise the parents not to have excessive sugar intake in the child. Let's have a quick look on the timing and sequence of surgical ortho. Use of CBCLP external elastics after birth. If the patient has overprotruding premaxilla, then no obturator is used in that case. Then the surgery early as three to four weeks, you can start with the lip adhesion procedure. Will not Flap procedure we know uh, it can start at 10 weeks of age minimum. Six months, 18 to 30 months, we can start with the von Langenbach procedure with a simultaneous closure of both the heart and the soft palate. Then at four to five years of age, correction of buccal cross by using a fixed quad helix palatal expander. Five to seven, you can go for a fixed palatal retention appliances. Seven to eight years, align anterior teeth prior to secondary alveolar. So that is pre-surgical orthopedics that you are using before SABG procedure. So secondary bone graft using the cranial or iliac crest bone. Then 9 to 13 years full banded treatment with or without maxi protection or nasal lip revision. Full orthodontic evaluate need for surgical ortho in 13 to 17 years of age. If it required distraction osteonasis or leftward one procedure along with maxillomandibular surgeries or nasal lip revision. And finally, 17 to 18 years post surgical ortho followed by prosthetics. Now, the role of ENT, speech pathologist, and the speech therapy due to abnormal function of eustachian tube in cleft palate patient, there is more chance of middle ear infection or otitis media. So, they have more chances of hearing loss. Speech therapy should start as early as possible at six to nine months of age until can continue until the adulthood. Then, use of pharyngeoplasty. The children with repair cleft palate may have a resulting condition referred to VPI that is called as a velopharyngeal incompetence. Now, that is a very important condition. What happened due to the scarring of the tissue? They are developing VLI or the use of pharyngeoplasty. Pharyngeoplasty is required in the children who have repaired cleft palate condition because due to surgery, as scarring and contracture of the tissue that has created incompetence leading to too much of air escaping through the nose during the speech and that results in nasally speech. So this condition known as velopharyngeal incompetence. So why it is happening because of repaired soft palate becomes too short and doesn't move adequately because of thick scar tissue. So speech diagnosed 
such as nasal endoscopy and video fluoroscopy of speech may be required to directly visualize the soft palate during the speech and help in directing the type of intervention which is most required.